Hey everybody, it's She's Got a Show by way of all I need is one mic.com and All Star Week and Weekend is coming and it's gonna be here before you know it. So I recruited some of the most influential people in Chicago to hop in Coco with me and sit right here and discuss all the things you all need to know and you need to prepare for because I'm really, really big on being prepared, organized, and ready. So without further ado, let's see who's gonna be talking all-star stuff with us now. I think, oh, I, I think I see him. Hey. Hey. <laughs> McKinley, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm fantastic. I love it. I like how you get in and you just, you, you get the seatbelt. Safety's first. Safety's first. That's what I tell everyone when they get in. And it's <coughs> awesome that you're about that life. So, I let everybody know that I have the, I've recruited the most influential people in Chicago. I couldn't get everybody. It's impossible. I'm sorry. If you, if you're, if you don't ride in the Jeep, it's, it's no shade. I couldn't get everybody, but I'm so happy because I've wanted to work with you for such a long time and you're in the Jeep with me and you are officially a, she's got a show all-star guide. So the people are depending on you. For those that don't know you though, Spit your resume. What's your Chicago resume? What makes you the right person for this job? Sure. When people talk about Chicago, they got to talk about sports, right? They got to talk about basketball. Um, I feel like we are running one of the hottest nonprofits in Chicago centered around basketball. Um, although, you know, we, we people in Chicago don't like to hear other people outside of Chicago talk about it. The violence is something else you got to talk about, right? And we're using that sport, um, that thing that everybody in Chicago loves to fight the violence, something that everybody hates. So I feel like, uh, you know, I can give it pretty decent guy, pretty decent uh, tour uh, to Chicago. Definitely. So <clears throat> they want to know, and do you, I know you got some stops to make. Can I drop you off, Ashley? Can we just ride and talk? Yeah, Is that cool with you? you? Okay, cool. So if we're, we're going to ride and talk, but they don't know what you're talking about, but I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Project Swish. So explain how you started because this is your nonprofit so explain how it all started sure so we kicked off the foundation um, in 2018 in August um, I was actually in Cincinnati at the time so I went to Xavier in Cincinnati I was studying sport management I thought I wanted to be an agent but that's a whole, whole different story um, and I called my mom like yo mom like I think I want to do something cool where we can give away some backpack some book bags to some kids you know what I'm saying but I don't know how to get back I've only played basketball my whole life, and she was just like, why don't you figure out a way to merge the two? So um, I called up all the guys that I played with, you know, played against growing up that made it to a higher level, right? We just kind of use those NBA faces as propaganda to get the city to come out um, and have a charity basketball game. And with that charity basketball game, we ended up giving up, uh, giving away 1,500 book bags filled with school supplies. Wow. So that's how things kicked off. And then from there, it was always like, I want to do more. Like, okay, I was able to help some kids for one day, but what about, you know, the rest of their lives? And so now we've developed this league where we're in all the worst neighborhoods at the highest crime times, getting like my peers and guys younger than me and older than me off of the streets and sounds that they would be in danger. So that's what Project Switch is about. That is incredible that is incredible so when you first started so you're saying you started this completely one man or i mean are you saying your mom like how, how did you start this with did you have more help a team how did it come about it, it started it really like it was an idea that came up like one morning it was like a tuesday morning something random and it was three weeks prior to when i was trying to do it so it was definitely a hustle but um i called my mom to see if it sounded like a good idea right i called all of my best friends to see if it sounded like a good idea and them giving me all the yeses that they gave me uh, was enough, you know, um, gas, fuel uh, to get to get the to get the ball rolling. So um, that's how I really things got started. If they would have told me no, you know, it doesn't sound like a good idea. We might not be a year and a half into this foundation. So wow, I do want to credit them for their you know their well wishes and their encouragement to get this thing rolling. That's awesome. So <clears throat> they were actually hands on. That's kind. Of, that's also what I meant because yeah. I know you explained it. You know, you did. You called them and everything when you first initially explained. But they actually got in the trenches with you. Is what you're saying? Absolutely. All of my best friends were stuffing book bags with me for you know three weeks leading up to it, um, helping me reach out to you know sponsors and funders and raising money and actually the way we raised the money to get the book bags and the school supplies in the first place was to kind of challenge all of my friends to donate twenty five dollars. Right. So we packed. We. Um, we decided to price the bags at $25, uh, which included a book bag and the school supplies within them. Mm -hmm. Right, So like my Venmo and my cash app and like my, my sale was going crazy, like $25. You know, all of my friends were just kind of like pinching in and that's how we got it started. So uh, using my network, 
and use my friendship to really develop this thing and that's how that's how we got the ball rolling that is amazing 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 so you talked about education which i love that about you the fact that you are educated did you graduate or did you leave before so or I have, where I have, are you at i have your... a little bit over a semester left in college at xavier university um, awesome in cincinnati i do plan to finish right uh as you notice things are picking up with this foundation right now they so, are um i, I want to say school has taken a back seat which has been my problem right but i have to push it to the forefront uh, make it a priority to, to knock it out i'm so close so you so are congratulations i'm saying congratulations already because you're gonna finish god yeah, willing you yeah, are gonna finish I'm so gonna that's fantastic so talk about and we're, we're the reason why it's, it's super duper important we talk about what you're doing because it's so important that definitely i highlight on my platform people that are about their business they're doing incredible things for the city because i am a part of the media but that also gives me a certain responsibility to help the narrative and there are beautiful things going on in chicago and you're beautiful and you have a beautiful foundation so that is so so important with all-star week in coming to chicago how do you feel about that because the last time chicago hosted was 1988 so no, you weren't even around. on this earth no, I wasn't you were not on this earth at all how do you mind saying how old you are i'm 22 you're 22 years old i'll be 23 in a couple weeks okay so perfect perfect timing with that with the 23, 23 yeah. mj <laughs> um so that is so that's that's wonderful that this that 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 you're here for it now coming back coming back how do you feel about chicago hosting it well just me being like a basketball fan and like a, I guess a basketball player um clearly it's exciting right um but just to be involved in a lot of the things that are you know coming towards the city or uh media outlets reaching out to me wanting to know my opinion or you know wanting my influence on how they can make a uh what to show you know or even bigger corporations wanted to know like how they can make a bigger impact and call on me for it um that means much more than you know just watching a basketball game i've been to some all-star weekends um through my relationships with like my friends who have made it to like a rookie sophomore game or even an all-star game or you know just being there to support them but just having involvement in it this year uh that means a lot to me so i'm definitely excited for it you know i have a uh, countdown uh on my phone somewhere and you know i'm looking at the calendar every day so i'm definitely stoked for it um that's really cool. And all the kids, you know, the players in my foundation are excited for it as well because they are they're able to be involved with a lot of stuff as well. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So, name drop. Who are some of these friends that uh, you attended All-Star Week to support? For sure. So, drop uh, them. I want to give a lot of credit to Jalil uh, Okafor. I played high school basketball with him at Whitney Young. And um, he was really, like, my, my biggest name, my biggest supporter um, from a propaganda standpoint when this thing first kicked off, right? And uh, he really helped me. <clears throat> change the change like the the direction of the foundation as well so um Jalil uh lost his mom you know at a young age and okay very sorry to hear that you know, yeah absolutely I, could, I can't even imagine what that was like but yeah. um he was able to like talk about it and talk about the trauma and the PTSD in front of like the kids at my foundation right and which really helped them uh I mean express vulnerability of people in the inner city communities of Chicago go through so much right and they're afraid to talk about it. Um, so him, like, being that voice, um, letting them know that it's okay to be vulnerable, right? Letting them know that it's okay to talk to people and get help uh, really helped us open up this mental health piece of our foundation. So, wow, um, that is incredible. Shout out to John. Yeah. And then, you know, every time one of my friends that I play against or play with um, comes in town to play the Bulls, you know, they, they help out and stuff as well. So um, I want to say John. I want to put John at the forefront of that. But other than that, I, I want to thank all of my friends. That's, that's incredible. And I would love to know, because you sound very similar to someone that we all have grown to, a lot of us, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say a lot of us, because there's a lot of hate, unfortunately, that goes on out here in the world, but LeBron James, LeBron James, every time you mention your friends and making sure, and your friends being there, and, and you all joining forces to help each other, and them helping you and helping the community, it just keeps reminding me of LeBron James, and I know that you have... You've had, um, you've been able to have some dealings with him. So talk about what, how that came about. How did you end up connecting with LeBron James? Prior to me even like meeting LeBron or just like, you know, being involved with him in any way, me and my friend Daryl always talk about this man is like the perfect like black man, right? Like if you just think of, and this is you know, our perception, you know, other people have their opinions, but you talk about somebody that comes from like an inner city, like under-resourced community, right? Everybody picks up the game of basketball. 
him coming from that becoming the best basketball player ever like that's one of the best basketball players ever um that's like a super raw in itself right but if you just think about everything that he's done like from a philanthropic standpoint and just like marrying his high school sweetheart and just like the father that he is you know what i'm saying like it's yes. just like bro that's that's really dope it um, is. It to is. watch and for him um to know who i was right for nike to connect the two of us mm -hmm. uh, that meant the, the world to me right especially as you know a former basketball player so um that connection really came about through nike i mentioned that you know not too long ago but um i was a part of a um the program was called Future Varsity with Nike, mm -hmm. and um, it was it was a uh, the mentorship group that we had help us was called Triple Threat. So I want to give credit to them as well. But um, basically, Nike wanted to highlight, I guess, like the unsung heroes in the community, right? Okay. So prior, their um, like wait, I have a question: Is this sure. Nike or Nike Chicago? This is Nike. It's a, it's a global. So campaign. Nike, not Nike yeah. Chicago specifically. It was but a global campaign. Okay, got it. So the campaign was. Um, the year before, they had an equality campaign, right? Where they used, like, LeBron and Serena. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, I remember. Name. And these people. So this year, they wanted to use those same names and just have them as mentors, right? To the people who were actually in the inner city. Okay. Making a difference. LeBron ended up being my mentor, right? Which was crazy. They connected me with LeBron. Um, I'm on a plane. I'm um, sitting next to, uh, I call him Mama T. Tracy King from Nike LA. Wow. Um, and my, my notification started going crazy. It was like, King James mentioned you, right? And this is on Instagram and Twitter. And he posted like you know the, the video that everybody saw as i'm on the on the way to la to a game not knowing that i was about to go meet him you know what i'm saying oh my goodness so uh, what after the game you know he came around the corner and we had you know a, a conversation <gasps> and, you know his words kind of meant a lot to me um, wow he was saying people like himself right who are far removed from the, from the community not by by choice but just because of age right um from a monetary standpoint lebron's okay um <laughs> and then just you know him being the greatest basketball player in the world, um, people hear his words and be like, okay, that's cool, but like, you're not there anymore. But it takes people like myself who are still in the community to use their voice that it really make the difference. So Definitely. I just want to continue to use my voice and you know, follow, follow what LeBron told me to do, bro.